Hey, what's up, gamers? I've just gotten done hacking into Nintendo's database, which you can tell because I'm wearing sunglasses. It is absolutely not me trying to cover up the fact I haven't slept in like two weeks. And I've just found out that hacking is like illegal or something. So before the FBI get here and imprison me for the rest of my life, I thought we should talk about some of the biggest gaming leaks of all time, which I've assembled a list of using my expert hacking skills of watching a single Did You Know Gaming video. Now, I'm just going to be straight up here, okay? I'm not even going to try and pretend to understand how like hacking or cybersecurity works, okay? Like, dude, I don't even know how to use fucking Microsoft Excel, okay? So we're gonna be looking at like what was leaked from these, you know, rather than like the very complicated stories of how, you know? <laughs> but first, this video is brought to you by Opera GX, a browser for gamers. Opera GX is a browser that's so customizable that it has way too many features for me to get through in only two minutes, but I'm gonna try anyway. Like if those Family Guy funny moments are turning your Subway Surfers gameplay into a PowerPoint presentation, then don't worry. Opera GX has built-in features that make your computer actually usable, like with GX Control that enhances your browser to reduce lag when playing games and having 15 tabs open at once. There's the GX Game Corner that helps you keep up to date with upcoming games, deals, free to play games, and gaming news. And this is actually how I found out that the Knuckles trailer came out and damn, it looks kinda sick. It has built-in sections on the sidebar for quick and easy access to all of your favorite music apps and a Twitch section that you can log straight into from the sidebar that lets you know when your favorite hot tub streamers are going live. There's a video pop-out feature that carries over whatever you're watching into other tabs. And we haven't even gotten to Opera's best feature yet the mods. GX has a mod store that's kind of like the Steam Workshop for your browser where you can choose from all of these user-made mods to download and literally the very first thing I did after downloading this was installing the spinning fish and now that's my entire browser and I regret absolutely nothing. It is important you know you can actually get cool mods too but you can also get Hamter. Hamter. And the best part is, you can make your own. And they're super easy to make too, which I can say from experience, because I made this one that has me in it, that I am demanding you all go and download right now. I know I already sold you a minute ago with the spinning fish, so you can get started right now and get all of this for free using my code in the description, operagx.gg slash diamondbolt. It literally only takes 15 seconds to install and I have the most dog shit internet in the world. And there's no need to worry about losing any of your 14,000 tabs when abandoning your previous browser because Opera has a quick import tool that automatically brings over all of your extensions and bookmarks. But I didn't even need to bring over my five different ad blockers because Opera has a built-in one that I highly recommend you use on everything except Accept my videos. So again, if you want to support the channel, that's operagx.gg slash diamondbolt. And now let's get back to breaking thousands of privacy laws. I think surely we've got to be at the point where game studios have like a prepared apology tweet ready to go for when shit gets out. Because I feel like I wake up like every other week and it's like, oh cool, the entire source code for GTA 6 just dropped. Like literally, if there is any game that's coming out within like the next five years, you can pretty much guarantee that some random guy on 4chan has already correctly posted the entire premise of the game way before anyone was meant to know about it. You really gotta love the guys who do these focus tests and sign NDAs and shit and then immediately head to 4chan to violate as much of that contract as possible. I think the best ones are when it just comes down to someone being a dumbass and not when some hackers from Russia are trying to steal millions of dollars. You know, like that one time that like Walmart Canada basically ruined an entire E3 by putting up a whole bunch of unannounced games for pre-order a little bit earlier than they were supposed to and got understandably piled on for the entire convention. We're starting with a game that we announced a few weeks ago through our friends at Walmart Canada. <laughs> Uh, and there was a time when Bethesda accidentally live streamed their rehearsal of their E3 announcement for Dishonored 2 on Twitch, uh, when that was very much still supposed to be a secret. Excuse me, you guys are being picked up by a mic right now, and it's going out over the Twitch stream. Ha ha ha. I'm not kidding. Okay. These leaks are funny, okay? I mean, probably not for the people involved. The guy that started that live stream is definitely dead. But, you know, those ones are a lot more fun than, like, you know, you know, the GTA 6 leak from last year, where I still really don't know if I can show a single second of one of the 90 videos that leaked online, because Rockstar somehow did the impossible and actually wiped it from the fucking internet. And, and look, after finding out that they got the dude behind the leak confined to a hospital for the rest of his life, I've decided, no, I will not be showing any of it, actually. But then even last month, when the trailer for GTA 6 was finally scheduled to come out on the 5th of December 2023 after 10 years of absolutely fuck all info about it. Some dude just posted like a super low res version of it on TikTok a day before. So then Rockstar just went fuck it and dropped the whole thing a day early. Another massive one that was pretty recent as well was for The Last of Us Part 2. 
and I have never seen leaks turn people against a game so quickly before. I need people to think back to four years ago, okay? Up until this point, everybody thought Naughty Dog could do no wrong after they made four banger Uncharted games and the first Last of Us, but on April 27, 2020, a full hour of gameplay footage and cutscenes leaked ahead of part two's release, spoiling basically the entire plot, with some pretty important things in there, like Joel's very large role in the game, and just absolutely obliterated the hype toward part two. Like, it was as dead as Joel was in the first three hours of the game. It also got spoiled how you take control of Abby for the second half of the game, who, for those who haven't played it, is the reason that Joel is not in the game very much. The spoilers ran so rampant that Naughty Dog had to make a Twitter post asking people not to post about them, which you bet everyone absolutely listened to because then the fucking ending of the game leaked a couple days before it was meant to come out. On the bright side though, some of the leaked cutscenes got absolutely memed to shit, so at least we got that out of it. 4chan got a hold of these four screen grabs from cutscenes and turned them into templates that people went insane, turning into pretty much anything you can think of. Like, okay, yeah, people posting spoilers is terrible and I do not condone this behavior in any way but these were very funny. <laughs> this all happened pretty much exactly around the same time that a lot of stuff started coming out about the horrible work culture at Naughty Dog. So a lot of people thought this was just a pissed off employee that like leaked the game out of revenge. Uh, but nah, it was way more boring than that. It was just like a bunch of hackers. Sony did say that they found out who they were, but we have not gotten an update since. So they for sure grabbed a golf club and headed straight to their home address. I, I was pretty lucky because the popularity of these 4chan edits eclipsed what they were actually spoiling. So I had no context for what any of these were actually for. Um, and it made playing through the game so much more stressful because I knew that this image was going to show up at some point. I just didn't know what it meant. The Last of Us 2 still sold super well, but its reputation following its release is still super divisive. And I definitely think the leaks were like a big part of the reason that people went into the game hating it so much. With such a big twist as the character you play as in the first game getting brutally murdered, being spoiled for so many people. Like it would have been hard enough to process that normally, but to find it out like this, like I can understand why people didn't handle it the best. Like I'm still sure there would have been some backlash to how the story ends up, but I don't think it would have been nearly as much if people had found out the way they were supposed to. I don't know, guess it doesn't matter now. It's probably why Naughty Dog just keeps remaking The Last of Us 1 and 2 over and over since they're like, ah, well it can't be leaked if it's just the same fucking game, right? And this still wasn't as big as the recent Insomniac leak, which I still don't really know how ethical it is to talk about this one, because like, I don't want to share it around any more than it already was, but you're probably just going to Google it, so I'm just going to do it anyway. In December last year, some hackers got a hold of two terabytes of their files and demanded 2 million bucks for it, and then dumped the files online when they didn't pay for it. And now we know basically everything that's going to be coming from them for the next 50 years. Like, we have a full timeline of their release schedule for the next decade that shows they're pretty much only going to be making Marvel games until the heat death of the universe. Rest in peace, Ratchet and Clank fans. A whole bunch of gameplay and cutscenes, and also the entire story of Wolverine were in there too, which I have spent every single day since trying to resist reading. And you had a whole bunch of dumbasses on Twitter going like, wow, the game doesn't look very good. Yeah, no shit, they haven't finished it yet. There was some cool stuff in there about like the budgets for their games though. Like according to the leak, Spider-Man 2 cost them $315 million to make. Jesus fuck. And they had some sales numbers in there too, which explained that the newest Ratchet and Clank game didn't actually make a profit, which is why I'm going to be 26 before there's a new game in the series. The bigger problem with this one though is that it wasn't just stuff about their games that got out, but also like they doxed a bunch of their employees as well, so you know, it wasn't like a great time. Alright, so that's probably enough of organized cybercrime destroying the lives of hundreds of employees in the game industry. Let's have a look at some of the less depressing ones. The Half-Life 2 leak is one of the most famous stories to come out of this topic, but it's so crazy that the story behind it is way more interesting than what actually came out of it. The tale of how a 21-year-old Valve fan got into their servers to spy on them while they were making the game for six months undetected, before he made the cardinal error of not shutting the fuck up about it to one of his friends, who then went on to break into their servers as well and leak the fucking source code. And not only did this expose to the public that Half-Life 2 wasn't even close to being done at a time when its initial release date was coming up pretty soon, but apparently 4 million people played the leaked version. So Valve was like, uh, yeah, this kid owes us $250 million, actually. You know, we were getting these statistics of like, you know, 4 million people have downloaded the source code to the game. You know, and people were starting to post X-rated screenshots of our characters having sex with each other. But even though they got the FBI involved and Valve asked their community for a witch hunt, they still couldn't find the guy behind it until the hacker emailed the head of Valve, Gabe Newell, personally with a fucking Logan Paul nice apology year. and said that he basically didn't actually mean to cause them any harm. He was just really impatient and wanted to see the game early. But then he had the balls to ask Gabe Newell for a job. And Gabe was like, 
Yeah, okay. But this man was playing 4D chess, okay? Gabe set up a phone interview with the guy with the intention of getting as much personal information out of him as possible so they could get him to admit to the crime and then try to get him to fly to the US for an in-person interview so they could arrest the absolute shit out of him. This one actually does have a happy ending though because in the end, the German police got to him first and he ended up getting off pretty easy because he was like genuinely pretty sorry about it apparently. And obviously Half-Life 2 went on to be, you know, pretty reasonably successful anyway, so. Oh my God, it's the G-Man! It all worked out. I, I feel like Nintendo, for the most part, is usually spared from having as many game-ruining leaks as other game companies, because we all know that anyone that steals or fucks with them usually disappears off the face of the planet. I'm not saying it doesn't happen to them at all, I just feel like I never hear about any of Nintendo's games getting spoiled by a fucking keychain. Still didn't stop Tears of the Kingdom from leaking online two weeks early, or Mario Wonder, where someone modded a bunch of the dialogue to include the word fuck as much as possible, which I'm sorry, is still kind of funny. Fuck you! I think they're one series that I can think of that was leaked to absolute death was Smash Bros. But I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? People were just so excited and curious about upcoming fighters that there were so many of these fake leaks, like the fucking Grinch leak that I talked about in last year's video that I still think is one of the greatest evils ever perpetrated by humanity. But it was always a nice surprise when through all of the misinformation and predictions that something came out that was actually real. The only ones that I can think of that weren't just all bullshit were that leaked screenshot of Ken that everyone thought was fake or that time Nintendo forgot to blur out the stage builder mode in the literal first second of a commercial before it had even been announced. And I mean, yeah, it was probably intentional, but I don't want to give them that much credit. And there was Smash 4's ESRB leak where the son of some random Nintendo employee took a bunch of screenshots of an early version of the game and sent them around to his friends, who then posted basically everything about it onto 4chan until Nintendo fired his dad's ass. So yeah, that kid is probably still grounded. But I think the single best leak, not just from Nintendo, but I would say of all time, was the Nintendo Giga leak from 2020. Because it's one of those rare times where despite it still being very much illegal, okay, your honor, because all the games in the leak were over a decade old, it didn't really hurt anyone and was more just cool to have for the sake of history, I guess. It was during mid 2020 when everyone was still stuck inside and had nothing else to do that I guess one particularly bored person must have somehow gotten into some Nintendo servers and uncovered a massive amount of unreleased content from some of their games from the 90s. To go through every single thing that came out of this leak would actually need to be its own 12-part Netflix documentary because the list of stuff in this is as long as the life sentence that Nintendo would give if they ever found out who did this. There was the source code of like a billion Nintendo games, the prototypes and unused assets for so many classics like Ocarina of Time and Super Mario Kart, which I still feel like I shouldn't be allowed to look at. Look at how the Womps were meant to look in Mario 64. Who heard this man. There's uncompressed audio from Star Fox 64, high-res images of the items from Ocarina of Time, which is still really uncanny to look at. We got to see how the Yoshi sprite in Yoshi's Island got progressively less horrifying the more they worked on it. I think one of my favorites are the beta designs for Pokemon Diamond and Pearl because of how cursed the original Arceus was. Look at that Reggie Gigas, dude. That looks like something I'd draw. He looks like a joke character from Undertale. For sure, the best thing to come out of this leak, though, was finding out that there was actually an official model for Luigi in Super Mario 64 after all these years and getting to witness one of the most beautiful moments in human history when world peace was momentarily achieved so people could slowly put Luigi back together using the textures and bits of his model they found in the code. I still think it's really cool getting to see the behind the scenes of some of these games that we would have never gotten to see if it were up to Nintendo. It's like looking into an alternate universe where some of the most iconic games ever made could have been fucking terrible. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much all for me. I'm sure we're going to be getting plenty more of these in the near future, but I'm hoping they're a lot more like the Nintendo one and a bit less of the home addresses of Insomniac employees. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.